friends, it's me, Corp, and welcome to Adventures in Summer Reading! <laughs> oh, check me out. Look at me, look at me. Whoa, yeah, it's science. <laughs> what, what's happening to my fur? It's tingly and, and my hair's sticking up. Stick! Stick, where are you? I need my science log. I need to write all this down. I've got it. I mean, I think I've got it. I, I think I'm really onto something here, Stick. This is gonna be huge. It's gonna be big science, Stick. You hear that? All we have to do is just... We have to... No. No, I think I'm just hungry. Yep, it's definitely hungry. I just need a snack, Stick. Okay, so grab me a, a snack. Let's put on our fanny pack, lace up our hiking boots, and grab your science log and some trail mix or pine cones, and let's go on our next adventure! Okay, friends, we're on our way to the Kentucky Science Center. Will you join me? Let's go! Well, hey, Gorp. Hey, Andrew. How's it going? Oh, it's going great. I'm so happy to be here. Well, thank you. Welcome to Kentucky Science Center. Oh, thanks. What are we going to do today? Well, we're here in our tech forum. So this is a, a studio where we record classes and stream virtual program. Oh, and we're going to cool. talk about some gardening activities that oh. you, uh, some of our viewers can do at home uh, throughout the summer. That is way cool, Andrew. But I had a quick question. Yeah. What is this giant ball right here? Well, I'm glad you asked. Ah. Because you're so fuzzy, I yeah. wanted you to experience our Van de Graaff static electricity generator before we did anything else. You said electricity? Yep, that's okay. right. Okay, well, um, I mean, I could try that. I got my safety goggles, so I guess I could try it. Well, you don't really need safety goggles for this, but okay. I can explain a little bit about how it works. Sure. So there's a motor in the bottom of the machine, uh -huh. and it turns a rubber belt. Oh. There is a Teflon and a metal spool on opposite sides of the belt, and because yeah. those are on opposite sides of the conductivity scale, it builds up a charge ah. inside the dome. Okay. So you can create static electricity. It's like a little thunder and lightning machine. So you thunder can and sparks, lightning. And if you touch the machine, you become charged well, just like the dome. I mean, I'll try it, but do you guys have good insurance? <laughs> yeah, you'll be fine. Don't okay, worry about it. great. Okay, I'll try it. I trust you, Andrew. Let's so what, do it. But what we want to have, what we want to show all of our, our, our viewers is that when you touch the dome, all of your individual hairs are going to be charged the Whoa. same way. So they'll all be positively charged. And when that happens, they're all going to spread out like little magnets repelling each other. Okay, that's, you know, that's a hair look I've been trying out anyway. So I'd like to see what it looks like. Let's give it a go. Let's do it. All right. I'm going to turn the machine on. Whenever you're ready, reach up, put your palm flat on the dome. Go. Release the rod. Now. And now, whenever you're ready, just let go and drop your hand. Well, what'd you think, Gorp? Oh, Andrew, that was crazy. My hair was all over the place, but I'm all better now. Thanks for showing me that. Sure thing. That's our Van de Graaff static electricity generator. It's one of the most popular interactives we have here at the Science Center. Oh, cool. Well, what else are we working on today? You got a lot of stuff out. I do, I do. So we're excited to share some of the recent gardening experiments we did. Uh, we just okay. had our Spring into Science campaign oh. uh, for visitors here at the Science Center. And this represents some of the uh, experiments I did behind the scenes. Oh. I am not a professional botanist. Me neither. Um, yeah, so I just sort of uh, was tinkering with some planting and growing experiments and thought now would be a good time to share that with you and the viewers so you can try these experiments throughout the summer. Great idea. I love to grow things. What do we got? So the first thing I'm going to recommend is that you can uh, look around the house, look around where you live, and, and try to find some seeds. It is okay if those seeds have an expiration date on them that has passed because you can still potentially grow interesting things with them. But I can't eat them, right? I would not recommend eating them if, if okay. it's beyond the expiration date. Okay, yeah. won't eat the old seeds. Check. 
And you want to sort of pick what you want to grow. So you can either grow flowers, you can encourage pollinators and insects uh -huh. in your garden. Oh. You can grow house plants for inside. You can grow vegetables to eat. There's all sorts of things you can uh, experiment with and try. Oh, great. I love flowers. That's a great idea, Andrew. <laughs> yeah. So if you've got your seeds, but you're not sure how old they are, a really nice experiment to sort of get things started is called pre-germination. Pre-germination. That's got right. It. So all you want to do is you get a container, like a little Tupperware or a, a, a container you can seal, even a little plastic bag. You want to wet some paper towel. Okay. You just want to, you want to get it damp, not, not super, super wet. And you set that in your container. Nice and take some of your seeds and sprinkle the seeds. Now this package says green beans on the front, but I know right. a couple of different seeds got mixed into it. Oh, okay, so, so that's okay? Yep, totally all okay, right. Great. You can sprinkle your seeds inside and seal it up. So you got a nice good seal. That paper towel stays nice and damp and just give it a couple days. Set it in a oh, nice dark place. Okay. You can set it in the closet or, or you know under some sheets or something. Okay. You can put it in a nice dark place for a little bit. It doesn't it, need sun? It doesn't need sun at this stage because oh. when you plant seeds in the dirt, they don't get any sun, right? Oh, you're right, Andrew. You're so smart. <laughs> what you can do is check, just check back and in a couple of days, you'll see those start to, to germinate, start to root out. Okay, gotcha. And the ones that have roots on them, you know are good and you know that'll grow and then you can transfer them to soil. Ah, oh, Andrew. This is such a great idea. Hey, by the way, what do you do here at the museum? Oh, here at Kentucky Science Center, I am a manager of visitor experience in our education department. So ah. I'm responsible for all of the experiences you can see on the floor and some of our special events and kind of the day-to-day. The -day. Oh, wow, Andrew, that's a fancy title. How did you get that job? Well, I've been here for um, about 11 and a half years. Uh, I have uh, a background in, in liberal arts, so I was interested okay. in a bunch of different uh, subjects when I was in school. And I have a degree in museum studies, which oh. uh, relates a little bit to what we do here. So well-rounded. So if I go to school for a long time, I could work here too. That's exactly right. All right. You Thanks, can volunteer Andrew. here whenever you want. Oh, I would love to volunteer here. What a great idea. The spring, I used regular potting soil, and I also used seed starter which is very fine. It's very soft soil. Gotcha. One of the lessons that I learned is that you really want to moisten your seed starter before you put the seeds into it. Why do you want to do that? Because otherwise you'll pour the water on top and it'll beat up on top and not soak in all the way. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So if you use seed starter, just keep that in mind. And Check. you can take a bunch of different seeds. You can take the seeds from your seed packets. You can take seeds that you've found uh, and just try to grow different things. So this is not the prettiest pot right now. Oh, that's this, okay. is, this is bird seed that we were able okay. to grow. Just regular bird seed for birds. We were able to plant in dirt and get it to grow. This is a little watermelon that's been a little shy about growing, but it's, oh, it's popping up right here. I love watermelon. That's great. We got a little ways to go still, I think, but uh, it's doing nicely. And then this plant, is uh, actually a real surprise for us. This is a uh, red potato. Oh, so potatoes. this is like a this is a mushy potato we got out of the uh, I got out of the pantry. It wasn't in good shape to eat, but I planted it in soil, and just in just a couple days it started to sprout up, and in a month or so we get this we get this big beautiful plant. That's so cool. So you really can just plant anything if you just experiment, right, Andrew? Yeah, and that's what we're encouraging, right? Like, I don't have uh, any expertise in this subject in particular, uh, yeah. but just get a bunch of different types of, you can try different containers, you can try different soil types. A little, a little hack that I recommend uh -huh. is using these paint trays. That way you can keep the surfaces you're working on clean and you have the water that absorbs through the bottom of the pots, assuming you've got some, uh, the holes in the bottom of your pots, the, the water can absorb through the top as well as the water you pour in from your from your watering can. Oh, so you can use stuff at home and just plant anything. This is such a great idea, Andrew. Yeah, so like where we're living right now, we are in, let's see, USDA hardiness zone six. Zone six? Zone six. What's that mean? So that's just a, a measurement that the USDA gives for our coldest temperature that plants will be exposed to in this region. Okay. So by doing that, they can map out what plants work best in different parts of the country. So we can't grow everything here, right? We can't right? grow everything, but there are a lot of things we can grow now. Uh, if you're watching this in June, you can plant a lot of these seeds directly into the ground now, or you can start your indoor growing projects 
for hardy things like squash and pumpkin that you can transfer later on in the summer and harvest in the fall. Oh, all right. Pumpkin's so good. <laughs> I have one, uh, one particular experiment that uh, we spent part of the winter and all of the spring doing that I really want to share with you that I'm, I'm kind of proud of. Oh. Uh, and I wasn't sure it was going to work, but uh, um, we, got, we got some fun results, and I think you can too. So, Gorp. Yeah. Do you like avocados? Do I? You can put them on toast. You can eat them with pine cones. You can put them on your popcorn. There's so many options, Andrew. I love avocados. <laughs> That's right. Well, this is a really fun experiment that you can actually grow the seed of your store-bought avocado. Get out. I had no idea. So these grow in subtropical climates, so you can't really plant it outside and expect to eat avocados from doing this experiment. Okay. But it creates a fun... Uh, display when you're done. Yeah, and, I like uh, fun. It takes a lot of patience, but I think you'll be surprised at what what you get. So oh, okay. Let's 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 go over the steps. Okay. Sure. Yeah. What do we do first? All right. So step one, and you're going to want an adult supervision when we do this. That's right, kids. Get a, don't you forget. Get a knife, and you want to cut uh, uh, the avocado in half. Gotta be safe. And you don't want to push down too hard because we're saving the seed, so we don't want to put too large a cut inside the seed that's in the middle of this. Right. And you don't want to cut your hand either. Yeah, right. Exactly Andrew? right. Nice delicate cut, cut all the way across, and then twist. Oh. To reveal the seed. Oh, that's you're gonna want to take a spoon uh -huh. and scoop out that avocado and eat it. Right. And <laughs> you want to yes, eat eat the green avocado, yeah. eat the green and yellow avocado. Sa uh, save the seed. Okay. And you're going to want to. You can do this under running water, but you want to um, peel off. There is a dark brown outer layer. Oh. It's paper thin. Okay. You want to scrape that off. Uh, one of my favorite kitchen hacks for this experiment and for other experiments, if I'm ever cooking or I'm doing something where I need like a scrubber and I need like to make a, 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 a quick scrub brush, just grab a piece of aluminum foil, oh, punch it up, and yeah. you've got yourself a nice scrubber, a little multi-purpose tool for use in the kitchen. Great, So I can awesome. do that to scrape off that outer layer okay. on, the, uh, on the avocado seed and then you're going to take that avocado seed and uh -huh. you're going to put it in a bag with uh, another damp paper towel okay. and seal that up. And then we eat it. You, oh. Not really. No? Uh, okay, sorry, Andrew. <laughs> you're going to give it actually about a month. So check uh -huh. it every week. Make sure the paper towel is uh, is still damp. Okay. At, after about a month. A whole month? A whole month. Wow. You'll notice that there will be a... Um, uh, a slit in the seed, oh, and you'll I start to get a little root. That's that so cute. Grows out the bottom. Wow! Look at that little guy. So He's you take coming. that, and you can plant that in either water directly in water. If you put it in a, a bottle of water, you want to prop it up with a um, top of a plastic bottle. I'll show you what that looks like in okay. just a second. Or you can plant it in soil, and uh, you do that. Give it another couple of months. And this is what you get. Check this out. Oh boy, I can't wait. What's it, it gonna be? It will grow into a plant. Oh, it's adorable. So, That's a great gift right there. Yeah, I it really, it like really that. does make a great gift. So there's a couple of examples here. I have one that I've done in soil, and you can see I didn't ah. I didn't plant the seed all the way, so the seed sort of propped up at the surface of the yeah, soil. Yeah, I see that. And this one is in water. Uh, oh. Like I said, I, I cut the uh, top of a water bottle to separate the the top of the seed and the roots from the water, um, but it grows. That's and amazing, the, Andrew. The stalk comes out the top, and the leaves came out. It took both of these about three months from the oh. time I time I prepped them. You got to uh, be patient for being a botanist, be patient. right? Yeah, but it's a it's a fun growing project. And, yeah. And well, I love to learn. Anytime I can find a new hobby, that's my favorite thing to do, Andrew. That's exactly right. Oh, you know what's so cool about the science center too, kids? If you have your cultural pass and you finish your summer reading, you get to come here twice. Isn't that great, Andrew? That's awesome. What other things can we do here? Oh, well, we've got three floors of exhibit spaces, a lot of cool stuff to see and explore. We've got science and play on the first floor. We've got the world we create and the world around us on the second floor. And there's a uniquely human exhibit that's going to be opening in July on our newly renovated third floor. Oh, wow, that sounds great. I love that first floor, science and play. Hope to see you there, kids. Andrew, thanks again for having me. This was the best. Gorp.
Welcome to Camp LFPL, where you earn prizes by reading. Attention campers, get ready to read. All you have to do to complete the summer reading program is read books. That's 10 books if you're in elementary school, 20 books if you're in preschool, or six books if you're in middle or high school. Read books and earn this Camp LFPL fanny pack. Campers can read physical books, ebooks, and listen to audiobooks. Don't forget to tell your friends about the books you read because they can be summer reading campers just like you. The library has thousands of books for you to choose from. Get outside this summer and bring along a book on your adventures. But you may want to watch your fishing pole a little closer than Bear did. All kids who complete the summer reading program will receive passes and treats from these area businesses. Learn more about the Louisville Free Public Library's summer reading program at lfpl.org slash summer reading. Have a great summer and happy reading! It's me, Gorp, and I'm here with my friend, Kate. Hey. Hi, hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming. Oh, so great to be here with the Scouts. Mm -hmm. I was just hoping that you could tell me a little bit about this program. Yeah, so uh, we have two programs, Cub Scouts, which is for kids who are in kindergarten through fifth grade, and oh, then okay. Scouts BSA for the older kids. Got it. Um, and I'm actually a Cub Master for our pack, 4043. Oh, 4043. Yeah. That's great. Did you notice my Wee Below handkerchief? I did. I know. I'm actually not a Wee Below. Oh. But I just thought I could dress up today so sure. I could fit in. Yeah. So well, how do I join the Scouts if I wanted to? So if you want to join Scouts, um, you can go online to beascout.org. And you can type in your zip code and they will show you where all of the packs and troops are in your area. Oh, that's great. Thanks so much for the information, Kate. Yeah. Hi, old friends. It's me, Gorp, and my friend... Thomas. Hey, Thomas. Hi, Gorp. Oh, Thomas, did yeah? you know that I am an expert knot maker? You are? Knot! <laughs> <laughs> you see what I did there? Yeah. I don't know how to do any knots. It took me an hour to get this kerchief on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I hear that you know a lot about knots. Yeah. Do you think you could teach me? Yeah, I can. Okay, great, let's do it. All righty. So we're gonna learn some knots today and I'm gonna start off with the square knot. This is especially useful if you have like two pieces of rope that you need to combine to make one long piece of rope. So how you're gonna start it is you're gonna take one side and you're gonna cross it over the other and then go under like that. And you're gonna kind of like when you start tying your shoes and then you'll take the same side, so we haven't marked with this tape here, you're gonna cross it over again and then go under, but this time you're gonna go through this big open bit here and then you pull all four sides of the rope and it makes this little square knot. It kind of looks like a rectangle, kind of square looking thing. And this is really useful because now you have one longer piece of rope. So we're going to learn the two half hitch. This knot is especially useful for tying your tent lines because it's a rope that can be uh, shortened or you can make it longer. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take and you're gonna make a big loop and you're gonna take the short end of your rope and cross over the long end and come up through your big hole you got here. Then you're gonna cross over this line again. So now you're on this side of it and you're gonna go over the long end again and then through this tiny little hole you made. It's right through there. And then you're gonna pull tight and you get this little hitch looking thing. Now you have a loop that you can make smaller or you can make it bigger. This is called a slip knot because it slips up and down the rope to make your loop bigger. And then the last knot I have to show you is called the bowline. 
And the bowline is really useful to make a loop that doesn't slip. So like if you need to give a rope that someone can put their foot in and you can pull them up a, a cliff, it's called the savior knot because you use it to uh, help people up cliffs if they're trapped. So what you do this time is you're gonna take one end of the rope, this'll this will be the still end and this'll be the moving end. So what you do is you make a loop like this so that the, the still end is under the loop for the moving end. And then you come up through the hole, you go around your still end, so your still end is still up here and your moving end goes around it and then back down through the hole and now you pull everything tight and you have yourself a loop that doesn't slip. So there you go. You got a nice little loop that you can put someone's foot in or you can use it to secure a tent line again like the other end of it that doesn't need to move. And those are the knots we got for today. Hey Gorb, how's your knots going? Uh, they're coming. I'm, I'm almost done, Thomas. Well, come on up and show everyone. No, it's Aww. embarrassing. I don't want to show up. Come on, it can't be that bad. Uh, 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 all right. <laughs> how's this look? I think you may need a little bit more work. Uh, I need more practice. Yeah, but you'll get it. Uh, thanks, Thomas. No problem. I'm gonna go work on my knots. There was an emperor, he liked to grow stuff, like plants and apples and oranges and all kinds of good stuff. I don't know, because I can't grow stuff, but he liked to grow stuff and he would grow a lot of it. And he started getting really, really old. And he said, you know what? I can't keep doing this anymore. My back hurts, my legs hurt. When I go to bed at night, I wake up and I'm very stiff. So I need somebody that's young that can take over for me, okay? So he decided he was gonna put a contest out there and he said, you know what, bring all your kids. I'm gonna give them some seeds. We'll see if they know how to grow stuff because you know, kids need to learn how to be self-reliant. So if you can grow stuff, you can live off the stuff you grow. So bring them on in. If they do good, they can take over the kingdom. All right, so each child came and he gave them each a little seed. And he said, you know, show me what you can do. So the kids took the pots home and there was one kid, like everybody knew who he was because he just would be outside growing stuff all the time. Like you could give him a pea and he might grow a banana out of a pea. That's how good he was, okay? So he took the seeds, he went home and he put it in a pot and he, you know, grabbed all these different rocks and stuff because he was a true gardener and he knew like, you gotta put a little bit, bit of rocks in there so water has somewhere to go and then it can continue to recycle its way around so that the plant will grow. He knew what he was doing, just put it that way. But the seed, it didn't grow, right? So he was like, you know what? I'll try a different way. Rework it in my head. Maybe I'll put the little rocks on the bottom, put the big rocks on top, put a little bit of soil in there, put the seed back in there, you know, go around a little bit, maybe put a little water in, you know, I, I, I sprinkle it this time instead of pouring it. Because last time he poured the water in there. This time he was gonna sprinkle the water on there. All right, so seed still didn't grow. Like he only had a month left in the contest, you know, what's he gonna do? So he went to Home Depot. He got a bigger pot, okay? Like the biggest pot they had at Home Depot. It was so big, they had to get it up off the top shelf. You know, that big of a pot. You had to climb up the ladder, get it off the big shelf. And he took it home and he sat it down on the ground. And then he put like big rocks and little rocks and big rocks and little rocks. And then he put the soil on top and he dug a little hole in the bottom. And he put the seed in and said, okay, it's gonna grow. So he watered it every day. This time though, first time he poured it, Second time he sprinkled it, this time he took the water hose and he just sprayed it from like way back. You know, it's fun, see if you can spray it. So he sprayed it way back, the seed didn't grow. He was exhausted and sad and scared because he didn't want to be the only person that bought back an empty pot. But guess what? <laughs> As the day came, he was the only person that bought back an empty pot. He was sad about it, but you know, he tried his best. And that's the most important thing, he tried his best. And when he got back to the castle, the emperor is looking at all the other kids' plants and all these, uh, there was one kid 
that grew square shaped tomatoes. Who would have thought? Square shaped tomatoes. So it's square shaped tomatoes and then you had some that had like really big green leaves and some that had really big yellow leaves and that was a rainbow plant. And here he was with an empty pot. But he was not ashamed until the emperor came and said, hey, why are you bringing this empty pot to my house? He said, you know what? You gave me the seed. I tried to grow the seeds every way I could. Put in a little pot, I put in a medium pot, I put in a really big, big pot from Home Depot. And it still would not grow. And the emperor was happy. You know why? Because unbeknownst to the other people, they had boiled the seeds. You can't grow nothing with a boiled seed. You can't do it. So the other kids were astounded because they had been found out. But June was like, oh, he wasn't gonna grow anyway. And it redeemed him because he thought that maybe he had lost his green thumb, but he hadn't. And the emperor said that because he had such honesty that he was gonna give him the kingdom. That's the real story. Oh, it was so much fun. I can't wait to try and grow my own avocado plant. <laughs> well, thank you so much to our friends at the Kentucky Science Center, the Boy Scouts, and Mr. Mira for that wonderful story. Remember, complete the summer reading program to get all your prizes until our next adventure. <laughs> See you next time, friends. When I grew up, it was all about the books and stuff. They have changed so much over the years. And they have computers, like if you want to play and if you don't have a computer at home. This is a great place for genealogy. I think of the library as an investment in a community. I definitely think libraries are still relevant. It brings the community together. It, it's a testament to our democracy. What would we do without the library? Hmm. It's very cool.